Мы жили около 8 месяцев в депортации, то есть мы уехали где-то в, в ноябре 2014 года. Я до последнего держалась, не хотела уезжать, потому что считала, что это предательство. Elmira and her family are ethnic Tatars from Crimea. They are among 50,000 Muslim Tatars who fled the peninsula after Russia annexed it in 2014. Послужило тому, что мы никак не могли принимать тот момент, что мы живем в России. Для нас это был ну, стресс, страх, ужас. Я не знаю, для меня Россия олицетворяется с чем-то таким ну, черным и ужасным. It's a wound reopened. In the 1940s, nearly half a million ethnic Tatars were deported from Crimea under Stalin rule. When the Soviet Union collapsed in the 1980s, many returned. Tatars now make up around 12% of Crimea's population. They consider it to be their homeland. Mustafa Kirimolu was a Tatar leader during the Soviet era and spent 15 years in prison. He now lives in exile and helps run the Crimean Tatar legislative body from Kiev. When Russians invaded us, they took our democratic rights. Media, television, everything is under their control. Nothing can be spoken without their permission. I'm often asked, what can the international community do to help Crimean Tatars? I say in order to help Crimean Tatars and secure their future, we need to stop the occupation. There is no other way. Today, the Crimean Peninsula is largely closed off and remains under strict Russian control. A majority of Crimea's Tatars opposed the Kremlin's 2014 takeover. And rights groups say members of the Muslim minority group are paying the price. The situation is getting worse and worse in terms of human rights. Now, uh, we see that uh, de facto authorities, they actually target not only um, leaders of the Majlis, like the most prominent people, but they target only local activists, they target only regular people that at some point show that they don't agree with, uh, with official politics. But Russia sees Tatar leaders as extremists. They point to evidence of Tatars working with Ukrainian nationalists to cut off power lines, block roads, and torture Crimeans living on the peninsula. More than 25 Tatar leaders are now behind bars, charged with separatism. Back in Kiev, there's some talk of creating a future autonomous region for Crimean Tatars. The Ukrainian government now recognizes the group as an indigenous people. But what Crimean Tatars ultimately want is to return home. They very much love Krim, my children, they still are scared. Мы обязательно вернемся в Крым, если Крым вернется обратно в Украину. Sandra Gatman, The Newsmakers, Kiev. Well, joining us in the studio to better explain the Tatars' predicament is the chief of staff for Crimea's government in exile, Arsen Jumadilov. Thanks so much for flying out from Kiev to be here with us. Uh, it's good to have you on the program. What is the clearest evidence that you can present that Crimean Tatars are being persecuted actively by Russia? The, I would name just the, the most recent one, the deputy head of the Majlis of the Crimean Tatar people, which is the government of the Crimean Tatars, who is held uh, under the arrest for two and a half years now, and the trial is s still ongoing. He was rejected his plea to see his terminally ill mother, just because they, the, the Russian occupational authorities in Crimea, they want to show that the Crimean Tatars are deprived of, of whatever human right you can imagine. That's the most recent one. If you take the statistics, you see that almost 10% of the Crimean Tatars living in Crimea fled the place. Not just because of the economic situation which is dire there, despite the promises of, of, uh, of the Russian Federation that they will uh, make a, uh, a pearl out of Crimea, it will shine uh, for the rest of the world, predominantly because of uh, the fears that they will be persecuted as their neighbors. Mm. And uh, you see now leading international organizations stating very 
clearly that there is a massive human rights abuse in Crimea, including first and foremost the General Assembly of the United Nations, which adopted respected, uh, respective resolution last year, December. Right, and Human Rights Watch as well that we heard from right. there. Sergei Aksionov, the head of the Republic of Crimea, says, quote, all Russian citizens residing in Crimea enjoy equal rights. Crimean Tatars are not oppressed. We have organized systematic Hajj trips. We are constructing a cathedral mosque. And he went on to talk about other rights. Right. Well, how would you respond to him directly if he was watching this? Uh, I would say to him that uh, the Russians are very good at creating images. And now the whole world uh, is aware of that. But when you see uh, the situation deeper, when you know the situation from inside, you see that uh, this is a story for the outside world, whereas in Crimea, uh, the people there, the Crimean Tatars, they cannot feel safe when they go to the mosque because right after the Juma prayer, the, the Friday prayer, uh, they, can be, uh, they can be arrested by uh, FSB, by the militia. They, uh, their fingerprints will be taken, their silver for DNA test will be taken, and they feel that they are always under watch, that you cannot make a move, you cannot post uh, anything on social media where you will doubt that the illegal annexation uh, of, of Crimea by Russia in 2014 was a good idea. But is that for all those who are non-Russian supporting or especially Crimean Tatars? I mean, what you're saying can't... They, OK, they might not be going to the mosque, but what if you're a Ukrainian who's against the, the Russian annexation and you post something on social media? You'd probably face the same. You will be treated the you? same way, but there is a special feeling uh, in Russia towards the Crimean Tatars, which is... It was not a takeover. It was a hostile takeover. They uh, were always after Crimea because for some reason... Putin, in his head, he sees Crimea as, um, as a birthplace of Russian nation, whatever myth he has in his head. And the Crimean Tatars are the only ones who, uh, who contradict the story, who make the story fall apart. Because the Crimean Tatars are the indigenous people of the peninsula. They've been there for centuries. And they are the only ones uh, who have the right for self-determination, mm -hmm. which Putin said that in 2014 the people of Crimea enjoyed. There is nothing like a people of Crimea. There is the Crimean Tatar people and the residents of Crimea. And it is the Crimean Tatar people who have the right for self-determination. I watched an interview uh, where, uh, from 2015 where it was for Ukraine Today. And you said quite clearly on there that you supported an economic blockade of Crimea, which involved tactics of sabotage. Do you still support economic blockade? I still support it. And uh, I would say that um, it is not just about the economics. It is, first of all, about the psychology. The Crimea Tatars live in Crimea. In, two in 2014, they asked numerous times, they were asking Ukraine, why are you trading with Crimea? It, it, is, uh, it is the trade on blood, made on blood. You should stop it. Because uh, it, you, it looked like as if Business as usual. Nothing happened. Sure. For but, us, but for the Crimean hurt, Tatars. Wouldn't that hurt other Crimean Tatars, other Crimean people, blowing up of pipelines and stuff? That's why the Russians see it as sabotage and extremism, right? Uh, what about those people who rely on that lifeline? Forget the government for a second. Wouldn't it hurt the very people you're claiming to help? Well, that's a, a flawed logic of the Russians. Uh, I mean, you cannot imagine Hitler, for example, to ask Stalin or to ask, for, for example, Churchill, why are you cutting the supply lines of anything to us when he occupied France, for instance? You cannot imagine him asking this. But you see the Russians uh, who ask this uh, for mm. Ukraine. They occupied the territory. They seized it. It was not a takeover. It, it, it was not a referendum or something like that. It was a military aggression. It was an occupation. And it is already called directly as an illegal annexation. It is uh, a wording that is used by the UN. So it is now a, a term used for uh, mm -hmm. the situation there. Does it make you feel uncomfortable that there are members from the right sector who are also supportive and involved in the blockade and the sabotage? Because some of them are neo-Nazis. They hate Tatars, but they're on your side when it comes to this particular thing. Look, uh, the, uh, we now we are all on the same boat uh, with every single citizen of Ukraine which feels that 
the territorial integrity of his or her country was, uh, was undermined. So uh, we will fight side by side with them for the restoration of the territorial integrity. Even if they're a neo-Nazi? Uh, the thing is that this neo-Nazi story, it is uh, overestimated. It is, uh, you see these stories you know, covered very often uh, by Sputnik or Russia Today, but uh, in the reality, take, for example, presidential elections 2014 in Ukraine. The leader of the right sector, he didn't even take 1% of the vote. Whereas the, the current president of Ukraine took 50 something percent of the vote. So that's uh, the popular support of those movements. Okay, so forgetting Crimea for a second, President Poroshenko supporting the creation of, quote, the autonomous Crimean Tatar Republic in the mainland of Ukraine, forgetting Crimea. Wouldn't that hurt your chances of ever returning to Crimea, of that being the, the, the kind of spiritual? homeland of the Tatar people if they give you an autonomous region elsewhere? Very important note. We are not talking and we have never been talking about an autonomy on the mainland Ukraine. We are talking about an autonomy in Crimea as soon as it is de uh, as soon as it is deoccupied and that liberated. Happen? I mean, the Russians aren't going to go anywhere in it will the next year, ultimately. 10 years. The sanctions work. Uh, the Putin's regime, it is, uh, it is not that solid rock as it was three, four years ago. I spoke, so to Poroshenko, crumble once. I spoke to Poroshenko a year and four months ago. I asked him, when are you going to get Crimea back? He said, we're going to get it back before the end of the year. 2016 came and went. We have the patience. And we know that as soon as Crimea is liberated, as soon as it is free, mm. we, the Crimean Tatars, we should enjoy a wider range of rights than, uh, than we used to have uh, 23 years before when Crimea was de facto mm -hmm. under control of Ukraine. So that's uh, what we are now about. We, are, we want uh, the Crimean Tatar autonomy to be created in Crimea and it will be put in place, it will be implemented as soon as the peninsula is liberated. Back to the right sector and those others on the right, they're against the creation of an autonomous Tatar Republic because they feel their country will be broken up. Do you respect that? You said that you side with them if they're against the Russian annexation of Crimea. Are you sympathetic to what they're saying here? I said that I side with every citizen of Ukraine right. which feels strong about the territorial integrity of uh, his or her, or her country. Uh, as for their stance on, on the autonomy, uh, there is one very important point that uh, we, the Crimean Tatars, we have always been declaring that we want this autonomy to be an integral part of Ukraine. We have never called for uh, secession for a, a separatist move out of Ukraine. So we want to be very clear. We want Crimea to be a part of Ukraine as a Crimean Tatar autonomy. That's it, full stop. Has the annexation made the Crimean Tatar people feel more nationalistic as Ukrainians? Uh, I would say that uh, it made the Ukrainians feel more like Crimean Tatars. We have always been feeling that we are citizens of Ukraine, but we felt that we are, to a certain extent, we, are, we were mistreated by the Ukrainians and uh, by Ukrainian governments, which were changing a lot in Kiev. But now we see that the Ukrainians, they have changed their view and, and their opinion about the Crimean Tatars. Now they do believe that we are on the same boat, that the Crimean Tatars are not a threat that the Crimean Tatars are friends and we should go side by side in this struggle. Is President Poroshenko on the right track when it comes to the situation of the Crimean Tatars? He is, and that is a very good news for us. Mm -hmm. What can he do better? Probably many things. Uh, I would say that uh, we will uh, see the results of all his promises, uh, whether he will deliver on them or not in uh, one year time probably. In one year time, it will be very much clear whether it is all about rhetoric mm -hmm. uh, or it is about real intentions. Final question, how important is it to you that there's solidarity from countries like Turkey and elsewhere? It is very much important. Uh, no secret that Turkey for us is of utmost importance, not just because uh, it is a brotherly nation mm -hmm. uh, whom uh, we see so, but also because Turkey is a regional leader. And uh, Turkey's stance on the illegal annexation of Crimea is very much important for the, the ultimate goal that uh, we are on to liberate Crimea. 
did it worry you when Turkey and Russia came closer together after the fallout of the Russian jet being taken out of the sky? Uh, it does worry us uh, whenever any country gets closer with Russia, especially Turkey. But I do believe and, and we do see that uh, the country's leadership, I mean Turkey's leadership, mm. uh, is very clear on their position about Crimea, that it is illegally annexed, it was occupied, it should be given back. Arsene Jumadilov, it's been fantastic talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.